Okay, cool. So today I'm going to show you how to work with some joints and make a setup similar to what we see here. This is quite useful if you are trying to emulate like cloth or you imagine you have a, uh, a cable hanging from the roof in your game uh, and you want to make it more flexible and interactive. Uh, and yeah, then here you go. Uh, there's just a bunch of colliders essentially with joints between them anchored into these two balls and a line renderer that is simply just looping through each of the positions that the game objects are here we're using spheres and then it will essentially set the point of line renderer so that's easy and as you can see just for a little background i've been looking at virtual reality interfaces and trying to come up with new approaches this is traditional interface as you can see we have our slider um, this is something where it has scalability um, it feels more fluid and forgiving and then this is the the one that i quite like a lot it's the it's a similar concept but using a spring joint uh, but it's clamped um, and it's got yeah it's quite a forgiving little menu system essentially so let's get started i'm going to first of all just create the exact same as we have here but with cubes so um, here's our cube let's just shrink him down a little bit and these this is a collider so these will interact with other physics objects uh, in the scene just something to be aware of cool and this is going to be our anchor one and i'm just going to duplicate this and i'm going to put another one over there and this will be anchor two and then what we're going to do is just duplicate this again make it a little bit smaller and we're going to move it across this is our first point we start from left to right and it is kind of important to take note of that okay so once you've created your configurable joint let's make sure we have a rigid body set to one with a drag of one uh, that seems quite nice we're doing the exact same as we've done before and the the main difference that we need to make the main thing that we need to do is just disconnect gravity we're trying to make this like a linear rubber band um, and this first is a configurable joint because we need to have some constraints. This one is not going to be attached to anything. However, this on our left hand side could do with a rigid body. This is our first anchor point. And we want to ensure that uh, gravity is enabled, disabled and kinematic is set. Because then in, in theory, we could assign that to the first connector. Um, uh, and then we can actually set the X, Y, and Z drive. We're just going to put them to 30 with a position damper of 1. Uh, this is just a number that I've just pulled up my arse. And mass scale 1, connected mass scale 1. So essentially what a configurable joint is, any type of joint that you find in Unity, completely configurable. And the X drive, Y drive, and Z drive are the spring joint attributes. So if we click play just now, let's just see what happens. Uh, so we have a spring joint connected to the anchor at the far left. Um, oh, there we go. So this is it. This is our first point uh, of. Yeah, so we've kind of constrained it a little bit. Um, it's got some weird rotation there, uh, but you can lock all of that off with your angular motions being set to limited and so on. So let's just uh, duplicate this now and add another point. And rather than using a configurable joint this time, we're going to leave that configurable joint as it is. But as you can see, when we move this joint, it will not interact. It has no Im Im impact on this one because they are completely disconnected right now. There is no need for them to interact. And it's the same with this, which is a static, essentially. So what we're going to do is now link them together using a spring joint on top of the configurable joint. So this is it own little orbit by the configurable joint and the spring joint we're going to set the damper to one again and we're going to make sure that this connected rigid body we're going to use the lock at the top and we're going to select our first cube which is this cube on the left and then these two will be linked so if i move this down you can see it's impacting that one and if I move this, it's influencing that one as well. Uh, there's a little bit of tweaking we could probably do regarding uh, the drag, to be honest. I think that's, uh, let's unlock this so I can inspect this one as well and just see what values may, may have changed.
Okay. No, that's quite okay. Um, so essentially all we're going to do now is just duplicate this cube. And we'll duplicate another one. Why not? And then we'll duplicate our anchor point at the end. So we've done this one. And this one is a cube one. So we're going to set that to cube three. So this is cube two. Set it to cube two. And this is cube three. So we're going to set cube four to include cube three. Now all these are linked. And this one at the end is completely separated. These two anchor points are not being used, but this is what you would use for your line renderer if you're going to be using that way. Um, so yeah, if we look now, we have a connected series of cubes and they will all be looking static until we apply some physics to them. And now we have essentially what is uh, a spline uh, that can be manipulated and interacted with the others. Now, I'm using cubes here. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I would probably need to tweak the controls a little bit more. Spheres are obviously, I don't care about the rotation on the local because they're all the same. Uh, but yeah, uh, th this is something that's quite cool. And I hope you uh, implement it into your game successfully and let me know if there's any issues.